I'm going to give you my secret formula to success when trying to develop a team through play. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you game tactics, what I use. I don't even want to talk about practice. You, know, you do what you do, but the game environment is number one. So I'm going to show you how you can uh, really develop your team. So I'm going to give you the rules of play according to me. I've already proven them. You can believe it or not, whatever, I don't care. I'm going to give it to you, and hopefully one person takes this on, and then they'll see uh, see how it works, and it, and it does work. So here, here you go. Free information, people. Uh, this is what you need to do on the weekend when you're playing, and uh, stick to it. And, and never never give up on it. So here's here's the rules of play. Depending on the individual, it's broken down like this. Rule one, have true possession. I typically say take a touch. That's depending on the individual and how good they are. Okay? You can have true possession by taking a touch or you're running with the ball, right? Some players are able to have the ball with them without a touch, but it's with them and they're able to – Go to the next step, which is look up. So rule one, ha have true possession. Typically say take a touch. Uh, rule two, look up and be aware. So take a touch, look up, and then the final step is make a decision. It's that simple or simplistic of a message, but here's the complications of it. So each, each player is on their own individual progression. So you really got to individualize it depending on where they're at. And you go through the, these three phases when you get to, to uh, make a decision. Uh, the uh, phase one is anywhere. So some players, we just want them to take a touch, look up, and play the ball anywhere to their team, any direction, because that's the level that they're at. So it's, uh, you, you base that on 100% certainty law. Have them lose the ball dribbling versus making a bad pass. Just you have to go through that process. Have them dribble the ball until they can identify a pass that it's a hundred percent certain they're gonna connect that pass. Okay, that that's how it has to start. They have to go through that process. And then they a couple things happen. They're they get confidence on the ball. They feel like it's okay. They they have to know that just kicking the ball um, because they're scared, it's not acceptable. You sub them out or whatever it takes to get them out of that environment. Of course, you have to educate the parents. These are This is what we're doing. This is the progression. And let the, let the parents know this is what I have for, for their child or their, their young adult or whatever, whatever it is. You have to explain to everyone involved what the process is or they're going to screw it up for you um, because you don't want the sidelines screwing it up. That's why I like the sidelines right next to me so I know exactly what they're saying because there is a thought process when I'm coaching. Um, phase two is you want them to make forward passes um, as the number one objective. Okay, Phase one, anywhere. Phase two, you want them to go forward with passes. So that might require them to spin, turn with the ball, and connect uh, passes forward. That's always the thought is going forward but connecting passes. Once you get through those phases and you're able to connect 10 to 12 passes as a team um, and they have a high success rate, then you can implement tactics. But once you implement tactics as a team, it gets stupid difficult. The, pro the, the progression will, will drop way down to like three to five passes. So if you, if you added tactics, like you're, going, you're telling your team, Hey, we're going forward under these same rules that apply. We're, we're going to try to find the target uh, of the false nine. You're going to lay it back to the 10. Um, and every time the 10 gets it, we want the 7-11 to make uh, diagonal runs up front. We like to hit the ball in between the two and three. You know, if you're doing, like, tactics like that. Sorry, we're going to have to interrupt this podcast for a message from me. Go to CoachCameron.com and learn everything you need to know about me and everything I do in soccer. You can find it on CoachCameron.com. You can also learn more about Anchor. Anchor.fm is where I broadcast from. It's a free app. You can do it anywhere in the world, and it's free. And you can make money off it 
as well. I'm making money right now on this advertisement I'm doing for Anchor. So download anchor.fm today from your app store. That information is going to really mess them up, which is okay. They have to go through that. If we just said it and they could do it, then then why are we even coaching? I mean, they, it just it, there's there has to be a process of of manipulating, not manipulating, but in a way, each individual to be able to go through a process and and get them through that. How do the, how do we get through that failure process? So let's 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 review those things again, um, as basic as it gets. Take a touch, look up, make a decision, and the decision is typically pass or shoot, right? So um, under a hundred percent certainty law. Then they'll progress. They'll have possession of the ball. They'll look up. They'll be aware. And then they'll make their decision of going forward. And you can change it from there and implement tactics. Every time you're into the final third, um, we want you taking players on. Beat the first player, get in the box. Then go through the process of look up, be aware. I mean, there's so many different ways you can go through it. But if you do this early, really early, and your focus as a team as a um, as a family, because a family's involved, mom, dad, everyone's on the same page of focusing on numbers. Say, hey, our focus is to develop uh, in a situation that we're having an average of uh, three to five passes on average every time we have the ball, and then five to ten, and ten to fifteen, and and go from there, which will get in a situation of losing in the beginning, but then you're taking major steps of winning. And then you can beat anyone's. Uh, I've done I've done this on the on the female side, and it had tremendous success because on the female side, it's very direct, it's very forward, it's very athletic. And then they run into a team that possesses the ball and slows it down to a snail pace. It's very confusing for that opposing team. That's why I've I, I've taken a team that was considered wreck, beating um, the number one team in the state, two zero in state cup where they haven't lost in two years. It was TSA, and we won in Tucson. We won 2-0, had the ball the whole time, and they didn't even know what hit them. And they ended up winning state anyways. We lost in the quarterfinals. But we had the ball the whole time. Every team we played, we had the ball the whole time. But you can beat teams that are typically number one, especially on the female side, uh, using this this formula because I've proven it. Over and over again, and I won't I won't change the process because it's developing the individual, it's developing the team, and it's very simple. Take a touch, look up, make a decision under a hundred percent certainty law. It's and then go through the process of when they fail, it's okay, but when they fail in a way where they refuse to look up because they're so scared, that's when you have to start having conversations. Say, listen, you need to go through get through that process of of failing to have the ball, and. Regardless of how technical they are, I mean, technique always, uh, al- always is, you know, <laughs> very important. But even with bad technique, if they're comfortable in a game environment, it's going to allow them to survive and get better. Because using proper technique in a game is so much uh, more important than anything else. They have to be allowed to fail, and they have to be able to go to process. They have to know what the end result is. It can't be you got to work harder. you you got to press harder. You, you, we all hear it, right? We all hear it. It needs to stop. We have to learn. We have to fail. But we need a path. What's the path? What's the formula? Give these poor kids, give anyone structure to the point they know what what can happen to have some conviction coaches you're gonna it's gonna be a a big it's gonna be a big ride with you know highs and lows and that's just the way it is and but you stay with it it's like the stock market you're gonna be like you're gonna have these peaks and you're gonna have these valleys and you're gonna have these you know plunges to the the ground and feel like you're starting over you have to go through the process and have a con- conviction i've always had conviction on development at all costs i always been that way and it's a frustrating process but i know it works i've been through it i did the work for you people i got you close i got you close as i can to the moon jump on my back and get to the moon because if you have the right pieces you can beat anyone with this so this is coach cameron 
um, leaving you with the most important information you can get from me, which is the game time. But it takes a lot of work. If you want, um, if you want to email me at coachcameronsoccer at gmail dot com, I will send you. I have it written. Uh, I'll send you the written form of my rules of engagement. So. Anyways, have a great day, and hopefully this helps someone out there. Just someone, one person. If I help one coach do the right thing, I, I've changed something, so I, I'll feel better about myself. Have a great day, everybody. Goodbye.